So, GitHub Copilot bursts onto the scene back in June 2021 and man did it shake things up. Sure, we had some cool AI coding buddies like Kite, Tab9 and a few others, but it was Copilot teaming up with OpenAI that really made a splash and brought AI coding assistance to the public attention. Now, don't get me wrong, Copilot is awesome, but it's not all just, you know, smooth sailing. First off, it's not free. You're looking at dropping at least 10 bucks a month just to use it. And if you're big on privacy, you don't want your code appearing on someone else's IDE prompt response. You'll need to get at least the business or the enterprise plans to ensure your privacy. But here's the good news. There are a lot of free alternatives. Tools like Olama are game changers, letting you run your very own AI models right on your local machine without having to spend a dime. However, there are a few things that we need to consider before installing them. Well, the first thing is that AI loves to sit on resources. To get the most out of it, ideally, you want to run your AI on a really beefy GPU. GPUs are just better at this stuff, thanks to their parallel processing and for performing floating point calculations a lot faster than a regular CPU. But let's get real, not everybody has high-end gaming rigs, you know, on all of their computers. And maybe one of your computers is all pimped out with a fancy GPU and a lot of RAM for your games and whatnot, but your work laptop, not so much. And speaking of work, lots of companies are super strict about using the company laptop for, you know, company work. <laughs> that means you cannot install coding AI tools or anything else for that matter. As for remote AI APIs or YouTube, the proxy will ensure that the only thing you can access is the glorious corporate website through Microsoft Edge or worst, Internet Explorer. So what's the solution? Well, set up your own remotely accessible AI inside your very own network. This way, you can tap into it from any laptop as long as you're on your network. So today, I am going to show you how to create a virtual machine, configure a Linux distro, and in our case, we're using Debian 11, install the basic things we need, like sudo, docker, portainer, NVIDIA drivers, and the NVIDIA Container Toolkit, install the Olama and some of the best models, or at least some of the models that I think are the best, and finally integrate it with your uh, coding editor of choice. We're doing VS Code, because I know most of you guys really like it, and as a bonus, towards the end of the video, I will show you two VS Code extensions that are AI-powered coding assistants that are free. Feel free to jump to whichever section you fancy. I've put all the timestamps in the description of the video. And having said that, if you like anything to do with computers and tech, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. You ready? Let's go. All right, let's start with the VM setup. I'm using ESXi8, but you can use Proxmox, a bare metal native Linux installation, or whatever you fancy. The important thing is that you have at least four virtual CPUs, eight gigabytes of RAM, and if possible, a GPU. The first thing we want to do is enable the GPU for pass-through. In ESXi, it's super simple. You go to Manage, Hardware, PCI Devices, and toggle the pass-through until it says Active. Now next, we're going to create our virtual machine. In ESXi, click on Virtual Machines and Create VM. Select Create New Virtual Machine, give it a name, and this can be whatever you like. I will call mine Debian AI. Select Linux for guest OS, but feel free to use 12 or SUSE or Red Hat, whatever distro you like. Next, select where you want to store the VM. Select at least four virtual CPUs and eight, and eight gigabytes of RAM, like we said earlier, so we can spare the CPU and the RAM a little bit. For the HDD, I'm going with 200 gigabytes, but anything from 100 onwards, as like I said, these models are disk hungry. Choose the network you want and select ISO. In our case, Debian 11. Then let's click on add another device and choose two PCI slots. In my case, I have the NVIDIA GeForce. Check for the IOMMU dependencies of your device. For instance, I need to add these two devices together or I am going to run into problems. 
Now let's power up the VM and configure the Debian 11 installation. I like graphical installs. I know some people feel badass for not using a graphical installation. I personally don't really care. If it's there, I'll take it. Choose your language and your location. Enter a host name to your VM and a domain if you have one. Then a username and a password for the root. I'm using this 27 digit highly complex password. And then create an account name, a username and a password. Select use entire disk and then select the SDA drive. All files in one partition, finish and write the changes to the disk. Debian will install the base system, so hang tight. Choose no and then select the closest region to you for package management files. Ignore proxy, unless if you have one, and let it rip. We don't need a GUI, so deselect those two first options, but don't forget to enable SSH server so that we can remotely connect to it. Now this part is really important, make sure that you select yes and then select the drive you wanted to install it to. If you don't do this, it will not boot. And we're nearly there, just reboot now. At this point, we should take a snapshot of the VM. That way, if we screw up, we don't have to be living at deja vu when reinstalling the VM time and time again, because you know it can get very, very annoying very quickly. We can just roll back to the point the installation was nice and fresh and just start over. We will do this a few times, I mean, creating the snapshots as we progress with the configuration, as it really helps us set up milestones and avoid starting up from scratch if we really, really mess up. Okay, now next we're going to install just some bare bones, minimal things that I always install with a fresh Debian VM. First, I'd like to install sudo. And once I have sudo installed, let's add the user to the sudo group with the command usermod minus ag sudo and then the username, which will be digital mirror. If you use another name, um, just adjust it accordingly. Log out. And now here, we're going to refresh the window so that we can see the IP address that has been assigned to our VM. Now, let's use the IP to SSH into the VM. Type SSH followed by the user that you want to connect and at the IP address. Choose yes and enter your user's password. Okay, now I always install these things here with every Debian fresh install. You can copy these from the description. I will make sure if I remember after editing the video that I actually put them in the description. Now run this command here, which I will also put in the description, or you can copy directly from the Docker documentation. It's a really nice convenient script that just fully installs Docker in your Debian 11 distro. Then we add our user to the Docker group so that it can run Docker without sudo. The next step is installing the NVIDIA drivers. And this is probably the most cumbersome part of it all. And typically where things tend to go wrong. Let me just say a huge thank you to Shanriar Chauvon for writing this tutorial on Linux Hint because it works like a charm. Head over to linuxhint.com slash install NVIDIA drivers Debian 11 and follow the instructions or just copy what I'm doing right here, like for like. So we'll copy the first line first to check if our GPU was correctly passed through. And if it was, you should have something like this, just like the article mentions. Next, let's add a few repositories. and let's run update. For the next step, sudo apt install NVIDIA driver. And again, this is where things, if, if anything goes wrong, is usually in this step right here. Okay, cool, it finished without problems. You want to see this line here saying install complete. Reboot the system. And congratulations, your GPU is now installed. Okay, now let's make sure that we can use our GPU from within our Docker containers. First, we need to add the repository and don't worry, I got you covered. Just look for this in the description. I actually add these instructions to my GitHub account if this stuff gets too long. Now, after, just run sudo apt-get update. Next, let's install the NVIDIA Container Toolkit. This allows us to use NVIDIA GPU with our Docker containers. 
and let's configure the runtime and set it to Docker. And using system control, just restart Docker like so. Now, let's do a test and run a container that internally calls NVIDIA SMI to check if the container can actually see the GPU. Awesome, it's working properly. Let's just install two really nice programs here, and that's HTOP and NVTOP, and this will help us monitor our GPU and our CPU, and also our memory, so we can see what our models are actually using. Oh, and one more thing, you can also run NVIDIA SMI on the VM to check if everything is working properly. At this point, you can literally install anything you want. Anything that uses a GPU in a container-based environment, AI, Jellyfin, Plex, you name it. You can even train your own TensorFlow or PyTorch models. And you can do this in this VM. Before we proceed with the Docker containers, let's install Portainer so that we can manage them a lot more easily. And again, I know that some people get really turned on with running Docker commands on the CLI, but I don't care as well, I use Portainer because it just Just head on to the Portainer website and follow the really simple instructions. All we gotta do is create a volume for Portainer and then just run the container with Docker Run, which you can copy from here. Done. Now, just head over to the IP colon 9443, which is the port we use to configure Portainer, create a user and a password, and log in. You can still run Docker commands that you can copy and paste into Bosch, but if I want to stop a container or tweak some configuration or delete an image, see which images I have, I mean, this is a lot more visual. Just click on the dashboard containers and you can see them running on all their glory. Okay, and now the part that everyone can hear for, installing Olama AI as a Docker container. Believe it or not, this is the easiest part. If I was to make a video just about this bit, it will be like 30 seconds. It's just the prep and the drivers that take the longest. Just type on Google Olama Docker, go to this blog right here and run this Docker command. That's it, it's that simple. And we got Olama running. Next, we can install whichever models we want. There are two models I really like that are super performant and are not resource hungry. That's Code Llama and Mistral. Code Llama is the Facebook model built on top of Llama 2. Now, this takes a bit of time to download, depending on your network, and the model is four gigabytes in size. Cool, now that it's finished downloading, let's type something and see it in action. It works Pretty awesome. Another thing we can do to have heaps of fun is installing a web UI on top of Olama. That way we can have our own personal AI chat a la ChatGPT. Now this is where HTOP and NVTOP come in handy. With these tools, we can check exactly what our models are using, GPU or CPU. As you can see here, it's using both the CPU Core 3 and the GPU, but it didn't fully saturate the memory on my GPU, which is how amazing this model is for the performance it gives. It's an amazing effort from the Facebook team, so well done. Okay, now that we have a fully working VM server powering AI and running inside your network, let's integrate it with a local machine with VS Code or with a VS Code instance running. I assume you have installed VS Code already. If not, just type VS Code on Google and click download and just install it. The whole thing is just next, 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 next. Super simple. Now, upon launching, search for Kodi AI in the extensions and hit install. You're gonna have to sign in with something. I will do it with my Google account, but you can use anything else you want. All right, now, Click on the Kodi icon right there and click on settings. Then look for Kodi Autocomplete Advanced Provider and choose Olama or Unstable Olama or Experimental Olama. It will have the Olama keyword right there. That's what we're looking for. And don't worry for the Experimental or Unstable because it does work. Next, just hit Control, Shift and P and type settings.json and choose the user settings. 
add this property to the JSON model, which specifies the URL and the AI model that we want to use. We are using the code lemon 7B code model. Once that's done, open a terminal, click on output and check Cody source graph so that we can see that the output is indeed using the API call into our server and it's working. So let's just give it a few instructions, hit enter. And when you see a recommendation, just hit tab. Awesome and fast. Our very own AI assistant server running on our own network. I mean, how cool is this? Now you can check all the models that you have installed just by typing Olama list from within the Docker container. As a bonus, here are two tools you can use that are free and work really well. The first one is the Kodi AI Assistant by Sourcegraph, but without the integration to our home AI server. Just select null on the provider and this option will override our server settings and use the default LLM defined by Sourcegraph. I think it's using OpenAI ChatGP3 if I'm not mistaken, but don't quote me on that one. A really good thing as well is using the Find extension. Find is built also on top of Code Llama, but it's trained with 34 billion parameters. So running it locally would be a bit challenging, not impossible, but a bit challenging. But anyway, since the Find extension is free and it works natively with Code Llama, why not just use it? To install Find, go to extensions, look for find and click on install. Then you just need to authenticate and it will redirect you back into your VS Code editor. Just hit Control Shift M until find the code you want it to generate. And voila, no more code pilot. But of course, you know, if you prefer code pilot, there's nothing wrong with that. Just pay the 10 bucks and that's all she wrote. So there you have it guys. No more excuses not to write code. All the tools are there. Most are for free and most make your life as a developer super simple. That's all that I have for you guys today. So don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like the video and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.